So the people in the treatment group, shorter time in the hospital, always a good thing, improvement in cardiopulmonary functions, oxygen saturation, the movement of air, heart rate, blood pressure. And then they looked at blood counts as well, so biochemical markers. Light therapy, photodynamic therapy. Can this help long COVID? Let's get into it. Photodynamic therapy is a huge range of therapies. We'll talk a little bit about that. But basically the idea is that light wavelengths can have biological effects, not just on the plants for photosynthesis, et cetera, but also on uh, other creatures like us humans. We know, for example, that vitamin D is activated by sunlight on our skin at least in the beginning of its biochemistry. It has some other steps it has to go through. And we know that light does other things beyond vision, obviously, in humans. So when it comes to long COVID, uh, my story of uh, you know coming to the idea of photodynamic therapy and considering, et cetera, in chronic illness and long COVID was that my past, earlier incarnations, I used to be involved in the uh, optics and uh, photodynamic world, more from the laboratory uh, point of view. And I also used to teach um, some really, you either into it or very boring, the mathematics of optics, etc. So I was very familiar with spectrophotometry and wavelengths and all that. Well, early in my career, as a physician, uh, I w looked into certain types of, you know, phototherapies and things. And phototherapies are done and they're, you know, there's FDA approved photodynamic therapies. And a lot of them are in the realm of uh, dermatology and a couple other specialties. So they're not really widely used, maybe a little more widely used in Asia and Europe, at least in my personal experience in those areas. But because of that background, when I started to see some of the more modern uses of photodynamic therapy, you know, going back 10 or 15 years, I thought, well, this makes a lot of sense. And there wasn't previously a, you know, a whole lot of this available. So because of this background, kind of understanding a little bit around optics and the physics of moving light around and all that, I took that background and sort of dusted it off. And then I looked at, well, what, what do we have in modern photodynamic therapy? And I started to look into that. And we started to use it clinically and, and the, the rest goes on. Now, the thing with this is, okay, so that's cool history. How does it help someone with long COVID or COVID? Well, again, much like with, we talked about, <clears throat> you know, IV therapy or other stuff like that, the photodynamic interventions are now starting to be studied and mostly in COVID response, the body's response to COVID. At least as far as I can find at the moment, I don't think we have much in the long COVID realm as far as studies, but I just want to say, I'm going to share a particular study that was very, very uh, hopeful for everyone, that if something works in the acute COVID setting, it tends to also be beneficial in the long COVID patient. But if it's one of these that helps the body recover from the insult, whether you're closer to the COVID infection or longer, further away, then it's helpful. So the research study I want to talk to you about, just to illustrate that people are looking into this, is germane. It was actually, you know, I believe hospitalized, yes, hospitalized uh, COVID patients. So this is about COVID and pretty sick people. If you extrapolate that over, which is always dangerous to extrapolate, but in my experience with people with long COVID and other chronic illness, if something works on a particular part of the problem in the acute phase, probably going to be helpful in the chronic phase if used appropriately. So let's look at this study, and I will link the study in the show notes. Uh, you'll have that in uh, in the description, either below the YouTube or in the show notes on the pod burners, and we'll get those out there for you. And I'm also going to link some uh, YouTubes from some really, really wonderful, smart, brilliant uh, communicators in the medical world who have looked into this with a much finer uh, comb detail than I have. They're great. Uh, so I'll put links to those guys too. But here's the thing. They did a study. Now, you always think, well, where do these ideas come from? Like light therapy and COVID? Like, who's going to do that? And I remember uh, because we were using early in, in COVID, you know, a few years ago, um, we were using photodynamic therapy with acute COVID. 
uh, there were a lot of people that really didn't understand it. And, you know, it was, I saw people, you know, posting about it and being called quacks and all sorts of other stuff, uh, largely just because it, like, it just doesn't make any sense. Right. So here's the story of, of there, this light therapy and, and COVID. There was a really wonderful publication and we'll, we'll link this too, uh, where they looked at what could we do with, uh, with COVID damage, spike protein damage, et cetera especially in heart and lungs, right? Because if you lose your heart and lungs, you lose you. And uh, a lot of people, especially with, you know, some of the earlier variants, a lot of cardiopulmonary problems. So they started to look from a basic science and an in vitro point of view. So that's not humans. At what if we did these wavelengths that we already use for other things? Like we said, dermatology, neurology, a little bit, other stuff. So we already know to use these, but we've never used them with, you know, COVID spike protein damage, all that stuff. So they said, well, what would happen? So these are basic science and then this in vitro research. And they said, well, at these wavelengths, uh, we saw this happen and it was all very positive with the effect of the infection on the tissue. So then this group that I'm going to report on here basically took it and said, well, that probably wouldn't hurt anybody if we did it. We've got patients in the hospital. Why don't we do an actual randomized controlled trial with humans? So this again gets you closer to the quote unquote ultimate gold standard for therapies, which is, uh, you know, a double blinded placebo controlled randomized controlled trial. Now this was single blinded, kind of like the hyperbaric one, because the operators did need to know who, uh, who was getting just the vest with, uh, you know, no power going to it and who was getting uh, the powered up vest. So it's single blinded, but it was randomized. So, and I just glanced down here so I don't misquote anything. <clears throat> so in their results section, they said in, in the LED group, so what they did is they gave, uh, they, they actually homemade or hospital made this special vest. And it looks, uh, it looks a lot like, um, almost like a flak vest you see in, you know, combat and stuff like that. So it's the vest, but it's a little bulky because on the inside, they have a particular uh, light array of uh, particular infrared generating lights. So if you've ever seen an infrared pad where you, know, you get a pad that's like, you know, one foot by two foot, and it's got all these little uh, lights on it. And so you know, hundreds of little lights, that's a, that's a light array. And depending on what those lights are tuned to the LEDs, you get a different wavelength coming out. So that a particular wavelength, and it was the same or let's say similar to the earlier studies. And it was real similar to what we use in other settings, like I said, dermatology and other stuff. So basically, okay, the LED group. So they put this vest on both and you can't tell. So if you have infrared light, you can't see it. You can't tell in any way whether they have turned it on or not. And that's part of why it's such a bulky suit because you can't see into it. Okay. So they put it on the people and they did a particular number of treatments and they looked at the group that got the placebo. So they wore the vest with no power. And then the people got the treatment and they said, was there a difference? So the people in the treatment group, shorter time in the hospital, always a good thing. And then statistically, it's always important, especially when you have a smaller treatment group that's statistically significant, improvement in cardiopulmonary functions, oxygen saturation, the movement of air. Uh, and there's a bunch of parameters on movement of air, uh, heart rate, blood pressure. And then they looked at blood counts as well. So biochemical markers and after treatment in the treatment group, there were decreases uh, in the uh, white blood cell families. You can take a look at it if you want that the level of granularity. And so their conclusion was, well, this was fairly cheap to set this up, pretty easy to do, and it's probably going to be a good adjunct therapy. Now, just like when we talked about hyperbaric medicine or all the other stuff we talked about, in any interventional therapy is, generally speaking, going to be an add-on. It's going to be a synergist. But when we're talking about long COVID, and so we can take, remember, what I tend to see anyway in the chronically ill long COVID patient is if something was helpful with spike protein damage or fatigue or any of these other things in the acute COVID setting, probably going to be useful elsewhere. And that's what we've seen with photodynamic therapy uh, across the board. Well, when, when we use these things in the long COVID setting, it's an, like I say, an add-on or synergistic therapy, and it can 
help the patient who's stuck move forward or help the patient who's been sick a really long time get their system working again so that they can start to heal better. So it may not have exactly the same quick effects it did in the acute COVID patients, but as we have seen with certain intravenous therapies, hyperbaric, et cetera, what happens in the chronic long COVID or spike protein damage patient or whatever um, is that these things promote uh, the body in its healing, which is the only way out of the long COVID. So you might say, well, okay, that's cool. Um, are, are there a lot of centers, you know, doing photodynamic therapy? And the answer would be, well, there's more and more all the time, uh, but there aren't as many. So what I would recommend is, is a couple of things if you want to look into it. Number one, I'm going to put links in the uh, description to, uh, there, there's a, a YouTube channel that I follow because these guys are great, MedCram. And uh, I believe both are pulmonologists. The one who usually speaks is a pulmonologist, very, very smart dude. And they've gone into uh, light as medicine. And you think, you know, I mean, you think pulmonologists, you know, they're dealing with lung things. Obviously, they've been very busy with COVID. Light as medicine, that sounds really out there. Well, no, it's not that out there. And what they get into is talking about the mechanics of why does vitamin D help? Why does melatonin help? Now, why are these uh, LED therapies and other stuff helping? So I'll link, I'll link their stuff. They go way more deeply into it than, than we have time to here. So I don't want to redo their work. But I just need to give them some props for the great education that they do. Um, but the bottom line is, is that there are now places where you can get red light, infrared type therapies, uh, which will get you in the neighborhood of this. So even if, you know, the, and this uh, vest thing, it, it was made by the hospital. So they're, you know, they, they're not selling them or something like that. Now there are LED uh, infrared arrays that people get that's like, uh, you know, red light LED beds that go into infrared and there's pads and all sorts of other stuff. And now there's even, uh, you know, sauna setups where you're, you, you can heat up and you can also get uh, some infrared. The bottom line is you want to, just like with IV or hyperbaric or whatever, you want to work with people uh, who've done it before, who know what they're doing. And again, you know, has this been done on thousands of people? And if we randomize it over multiple centers and all that? No, no, we haven't had time to do that yet. But it's a relatively inexpensive intervention. It's biology and its physics make some sense based on the way we use photodynamic therapy for other things. And I think as a synergist and something to help the body move through long COVID, uh, it's reasonably accessible uh, a little bit more now than it used to be. And it's something to look into. Now, we may in other uh, sections of this get into other photodynamic therapies, but I didn't really want to muddy the waters uh, because I really want to talk about the, the uh, infrared type therapy using LED arrays that this particular study, had, uh, the two studies I mentioned, had brought out. Photodynamic therapy can be a lot less complex. You can walk outside or it can be a lot more complex where uh, we actually will use uh, endo laser. So lasers inside of the body uh, and deliver different wavelengths of light for different medical purposes. That's a whole other thing. And obviously that you have to work with somebody who's really highly trained to do that sort of thing. Well, I'm Dr. Paul Anderson. This is Medicine Health Podcast. It's been uh, a lot of fun talking to you guys. Again, this has uh, started to be a 16-part series on long COVID. We're getting so much engagement and questions. I'm probably going to kick that out to a number of other sections on long COVID because it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to look at the research and bring it to you, but also to hopefully inform it in some clinical way uh, from those of us who are treating people with chronic illness, which could include long COVID. Uh, whatever, uh, whether Podburner or YouTube or whatever, please like, share, subscribe, do the notifications because sometimes the algorithms shove us over to the side and we talk about COVID or long COVID. That's just the way the world is. So notifications. My hub website where you can learn about like, you know, the newsletters and uh, all the links to all these different media and all that stuff is dranow.com, D-R-A-N-O-W.com. Go there, you got links. If you're a healthcare practitioner, there's links for you guys. If uh, you're looking for newsletters or media, uh, it's, it's all in there. So it's all in one place. But please do check out the YouTube channel if you're not watching this on YouTube. Uh, that community is growing and uh, we really try to do as good a quality education uh, as we possibly can. Thank you very much. I'm really glad that you listened. I'll see you all on the next